Welcome to the King of the Palace. I'm Dennis Nelson with this week's bowlers. To my left, the reigning king, Mr. Jonathan Boudreau. Welcome back. Thank you very much. Uh, what are your thoughts about bowling a newcomer, Ryan? Well, get a, you know, I'm, threw a big score in a roll off, so it was hot. Um, you know, I'm going to have to keep throwing good scores, hopefully, you know, get on the headpin a little bit more consistently, but, you know, I've been able to squeak them out so far, but that luck usually comes to an end, so see what happens. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. And uh, newcomer to King of the Palace, number two seed with a roll-off score of 660, Mr. Ryan, don't call me Ivan Drago. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Dennis. It's good to be here. Although my family pronounces it Drago, by the way. Drago? Yeah. Drago, I apologize. Oh, no worries. Drago's good. They call me that all the time. <laughs> what are your thoughts about bowling, uh, this legend, Jonathan Boudreau? Oh, he throws a hell of a ball, so definitely looking forward to bowling. And I had so much fun bowling in this uh, tournament now that I finally made it, so... I'm going to show everyone what I can do. Yeah, you said you missed the cut a couple times by, like, single digits? Oh, one slight, just a few pins, and the other time, same thing. So now that I earned it, so very excited. Any nerves? Oh, yeah, I got the butterflies, as Mike Morin would always say. But you know what? It's only excitement, butterflies of excitement. Well, after you throw your first mark, you should be good to go. Oh, absolutely. Well, good luck to you. Thank you. Good luck to you. I'll see Thank one you. of you in the 11th box. Welcome, everyone, to the King of the Palace. You are watching the scratch match where Ryan Drago is facing off against the current champion, Mr. Jonathan Boudreau. Ryan has been bowling for 22 years. His average is a 109. His high single is a 164. His high triple is a 410. Ooh. He comes out of Agawam Bowl in Agawam Mass. Opens up, leaves the four horsemen left. I don't think the wood's going to play a fact. Well, who knows? I don't like, I don't like that wood. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Well, if he splits him, you're right. And he, you know, oh, 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 and then, then now it's now it's door. See. You know, I love that wood. Did I tell you how much I love that wood? <laughs> the wood. And he, he thanks the Bowling Gods, opens up the show. Second ball, the that, Bowling Gods reward him. That takes the butterflies away, perhaps. And I don't know if he put it on his bio sheet, but I just got a message from somebody that Ryan is actually a righty, but he bowls lefty. Really? Yes. No. I have to ask for that. Oh, he wants to load the spear up. So let me ask you, Steve, should that be allowed? Yeah, what? <laughs> what? Just kidding, yeah. Throw Ryan, left him. Ryan's nickname is Babyface or Drago or even Ivan. And he's an aspiring screenwriter. Yes, yes, uh -huh. he is. He's left that ugly mess here. I got to go in for you, Michael, after he uh, finishes this. But, well, maybe I could do it now. Many moons ago, I wrote a, an appeal. <laughs> that I lost high average to a left-handed bowler Ugh. in a league. <laughs> and um, I put down that a left-handed bowler should start off with a minus five. Because... <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, I did this. I got copies of the little somewhere. I believe it. <laughs> because <laughs> how many left-handed bowlers are there on average? Oh. Actually, the, there's more coming up now. Oh, really? Yeah, there's more and more. Well, they got an advantage because their ball doesn't... You know, won't be subjected to so many pivots yeah. as a right-handed ball. You have to I don't agree think with that. that. That one's not going to hold water. No, I know it didn't. Up now yeah. on Alley 3, Mr. Jonathan Boudreau, the reigning champ. He's been bowling for 21 years. His high average is a 126. His high singles are 200. His high trip is a 491. He comes out of Central Park, Lanes, Metro, oh, and, and Sunnyside. <laughs> both. Where have we seen this uh, movie before? <laughs> my goodness, both times. <laughs> you know, oh, quickly, you know what my answer was? My answer I got? What's that? Does Steve go out and the, when he rolls a boat, does he use oars? <laughs> <laughs> the champ on Alley 4. Nails it. Look at this. Get over. Uh, okay. So there is defense in bowling after all. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of which is being left-handed, apparently, according to Steve. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll never convince me different. Well, that's like his appeal that he uh, he tried to do to have a mulligan instated in Canada. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that that's interesting. Well, well technically, there is a mulligan because some leagues, it's uh, take it or leave it in the first box. I've so never you, heard that. Never heard of that. Take him what? Take it or leave it in the first box. In your oh, okay. in league, league play. Yeah, well, I've heard of that, yeah. No, mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted, if you're in a league, you're allowed one time... One mulligan if you get one. You know, if you okay. get a spread eagle, you can mm -hmm. just, you know, do away with the box. Oh. Only once a string. And everybody Only Steve. Once Only a string? Only Steve. Once a string, yeah. Oh, that would take forever to bowl, though, because wow. you add another 15 minutes to league night? No, 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 just one box. 
Oh, for the whole night? Yeah, for the whole oh, night. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. One, one the whole boat. Take it in the first string, second string. Of mm -hmm. course, I got laughed down on that one, too. Mm -hmm. I'm not or surprised. The, or, <laughs> you don't, you don't Steve, take I don't it think personally. anybody took you seriously with flag shorts on. <laughs> no, I also bought, I had flag shorts, red, white flag shorts. Flag shorts? No. Yeah. American like, flag shorts. Yeah. Hey, they're comfortable. Yeah. There's no rules in Bowman what you can wear, right? Well, just don't, don't run that up the flagpole. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there is in, um, in the world's, there's a dress code. Well, what do you have to have? You have to wear a collared shirt. Yeah. And uh, they did, they did in-state shorts this year, but they couldn't be like, Sports shorts. They had to be like dress shorts, like golf shorts. Cargo mm. shorts. Oh. Yeah, cargo yeah. shorts. Well, no, actually, no. No cargo shorts. They can't have pockets on the side. Only Ugh. dress shorts. Well, why can't you have pockets? They, that's what they said. I don't know. I wasn't part of the... Who makes up? Is there a rules oh, committee? Oh, Yes. Oh. Yes. There, there is a rules committee? Yep. Oh. All the captains. How about if you go for a shoot uh, a single pin without wood in the 10th box and you miss it, you get to shoot it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Steve. Or if you make it, you get an 11. The champ on alley three working on a spare. I know. Won't we guys think of these things? Yep. Thanks for cutting <laughs> me off, David. <laughs> I've been doing it for seven years. I've become a pro. <laughs> right down the middle of the plate leaves a triangle. Yeah, one of the six Mongols. Two, four, five. Piece of wood behind the five. Very difficult shot. Maybe, maybe what would you think? Oh, six out of ten? Pro Bowl? Oh, uh, yeah, I would say yeah. so. Yeah. Difficult shot. Well, there's one of the four. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tough shot. One of the interesting things, though, about watching, uh, and don't wash my mouth with soap here, watching a 10 pin on a television now, the way Fox is doing it, they have stats for just about every spare combination. You know, this shot is made 84.8% oh, of the time. Oh. And that's something, Steve, that you will oh, love. I love. Oh, that. no, yeah. no, Mike, please, no. <laughs> <laughs> it, the took question is, it took Dennis and I six, six seasons to break him of that habit. <laughs> but the question is... But to actually how, have it, not have to argue about it. Yeah, yeah but the question <laughs> is, how did they ob obtain that? Well, because they somebody, you know, Tried keeps tracks it. Uh, you know, probably strength? for 30 years. But that's what I was going to say. They, what do you think the I mean, minimum would have to be? To oh, track I it? would say the sh they've, you know, ABC and all the other network shows have been on for at least 50 years. Uh, so they've got a pretty good database to get work database, from. Yeah. Oh, who's left the fourth? And it's only the ten. stat geeks that care about that. Yeah, really? Great. I don't Thank think you. the general public really cares. Oh, I just... <laughs> After four, Jonathan Boudreau <laughs> at 54. Ryan Trago at 41. Uh, what, I, what I don't understand like channel five and i believe stars and strikes i know mm -hmm. comcast did it all the old tapes they just throw out isn't that a shame i, I, I don't know get that, that i know that 50 channel nds did i don't know if channel five has many i don't think they have many of them it's it's uh, ridiculous actually mm -hmm. oh, a little like weak. my three i was on comcast three times and it, i've never seen them on youtube because they're spare really? I, I had them on um right video VH, wolfman VHS, might have them but he doesn't oh, i've checked but I had him, I gave him to Frank DeLuca, mm -hmm. and he's actually converted him over to uh, DVD form, and he's going to put him on his alley chat. Oh, good. Track. But it's like, how many shows have gone by the wayside because they, yeah. they threw everything out, which I think is a waste, especially of, you know, how many different things Well, can't they, gone. Dennis, can't they erase what's on there and use it again for something else? No, I'm talking about the, the originals. The, uh, yeah, the originals. You've got you on TV, and instead of, like you say, getting rid of it, they erase it and tape something else. I don't, well, however they did with it, but they yeah. all the old shows like Channel 5, mm -hmm. uh, NDS, Comcast, they got destroyed. Yeah, they viewed it as disposable programming. Yeah. Why oh. would they want to keep the tapes when they could run st stuff over it? They didn't have a sense of uh, archiving, right? Yeah, sadly. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah, this, this game imagine? is sadly docu uh, not documented. Sorry. Right. And I, I blame the ICBA for that to some point. I really do. Well, they, they didn't, you know, I, I don't really know if that's true or not, but, it, you know, they really had nothing to do with come on, come on, come on. Oh. funding the programs other than, you know, whatever they, they put into it. But it's up to the TV stations. They, they right. have the last word on, I don't want to say, is we have a pin down on lane three, yeah. the eight pin. Yeah, the eight pins yeah. down. But I feel like um, that organization should have been documenting stuff like that. And oh, oh, in that sense, yes, yes. the archiving part. Yes. Right. Would have been nice. Yes. I mean, the ICBA only came about in probably 87, I think. So it would have been the MBA or the NHCBA. Right. Um, MBA specifically with Channel 5. Come on. 
But could you imagine wow, that throws never... the ball in the ocean and gets a favorable could break. You, could you imagine never seeing Paul Berger's 500 triple? Oh, no. no. Thank God no. for people who taped it. Taped it, yeah. I think that, Michael, that's the only time a 500's been on TV, right? As far as I know. Yeah, I don't think I've mm -hmm. ever seen it. Oh, yes. Now, there's another one people ask me about. You know, there's the, the line in front of the head pin. Any dead wood over that line or mm -hmm. makes contact, you got to take it out. Right. Why'd they decide on 22 inches? Probably because you destroy the masking units so people start hitting pins that roll out too far. So if one went up further, further out, mm -hmm. it'd be a better chance of, okay. hit, of hitting the wood and making contact and causing damage. Causing damage. Yeah, causing damage. You're, you're, yeah, you're okay. gonna, right. Thank you. Okay, I didn't know people ask me. I don't know. Chip on alley four. Oh, no, look at look that. Oh, this. and he's got another break. Not even just the masking units either. The light bulbs that are in there. Oh, that's yeah. true. Yeah. The yeah. light bulbs yeah. are yeah. very yeah. dangerous. Uh, How would this. you like to have been a pin boy back oh, in the day? I heard so many horrors <laughs> from your show, especially people yeah. who wrote in oh, saying yeah. how, much, how many injuries they had from being Ooh, a pin boy. Just it's off. amazing. And that's what really helped to write this book that I did was uh, I saved a lot of those emails from people back in the 90s and uh, in the 2000s because those people were but around. How did, how did the law allow that to be? Of course, the labor laws back then for child well, labor. A lot different. Uh, yeah, different now. There weren't any. Well, my speaker. mother's brother worked in the Lawrence Mill in 1914. He mm -hmm. was 13 years old and quit school, and they didn't, <laughs> they yeah. didn't care. And a lot of the world is still that way, yeah. sadly. And, well, foreign countries, yeah. After six, Jonathan Boudreau at 74, Ryan Drago at 60. Well, he's got to get it going, people. Ryan's favorite shot is a strike. His least favorite shot are single pins. See, there you go. Well, he's got seven of them up there right yes. now. <laughs> Got to throw the strike oh, to get the spare, and he nice got shot. it. Beautiful right. pick up. Here's another one for you, Michael. How fast do you think the pin has to roll to knock the pin down? How fast? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. Uh, uh, fast enough to knock the pin over. That's yeah. Right. See, that's that. Because that, once it goes beyond eight degrees, it's it's down. It's down. Right. Eight degrees. You're absolutely correct. I've always said about four miles an hour. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, good. okay. Come on, come on, come on back. Come on back. Well, better play the three on the right, Ryan. Uh, Try to split it. Oh, yeah. you're going to go left, David. No, I would go to the three on the right. Yeah, got to play it safe. The only thing, he's going to have to cut that three pin really thin. And no. Which he tried to do. He's left the two three. You know, this isn't seen too much. But two three, very rarely seen by itself. It is possible. I've seen it converted, cut right into each other. Yep. I've done, in this house, I've cut the nine pin into the seven pin three times clean. Nine oh, is that right? Seven. Yeah. Wow. It just tipped over, or did it slide over? It slid over. Yeah. Slid over. I, I barely nicked it on the right side, and it wow. just went over. Jonathan's uh, favorite shot is a triangle. His least favorite shot is the four-five-seven or the five-six-ten. And he also oh, is a teacher's up. aide when he's not bowling. Oh, look oh. at this. He's got the spread eagle with a claw. <laughs> Never get that one, Michael. With a what? A claw. Don't ask. Oh, a claw. Oh, okay. Mike, don't ask. Spread eagle with a claw. Or a talon, he calls it. Or a talon. Oh! Well, but it one helps, and the same. It helps make the shot a little easier. And it's funny the number of people that think you should go for the four on the other side, right. which, of course, we know is not the way to no. do it. you got more to work with when you got that four over there and you're shooting from the left. Yeah, you always try to throw a lesson to more. Yeah, there you go. I also, I have all, I've also believed, too, that I think um, you bowl to the level of your competition. Yep. You know? I think if somebody's dropping bombs left and right on you, then you're going to have to do what sure. you have mm -hmm. to do. So if somebody's just kind of like coasting along, oh, you know, oh, well, not saying favorite. like tank, but just, you know, match them and, you know. There's no urgency there. Right. Here's his favorite shot. Tough, tough spear. Maybe 30% maybe of the time. It's my favorite oh. shot. Oh. Ooh. Michael, when you're bowling in your league. Mm-hmm. And you're up there. You're the anchor ball. You're in your last two boxes. You want to know what you need to win? I prefer to, to bowl first so that the pressure is no, no. on the other person. <laughs> no, no, no. You're getting up. <laughs> and do you want to know you need, let's say the oh. other guy's already done. Do you want to know you need 21 to win? or? Yeah, I guess I do. Dennis? I guess it's oh, kind of helpful to know. Now, see, David, absolutely. Does, David doesn't want to know. Me, I want to know. When I bowl roll-offs, yeah. I don't want to know. Well, why is that? Because oh, it puts more know. pressure on yourself. Like my, um, what time was it? My, uh, my third time on Comcast, I was bowling out of Needham. 
And I didn't even know with the first four strings of the roll off, I was number one. I didn't even know. In the last string, wow. I had like a 99 string, and I thought, oh, great, I'm, I'm way out of it. But Dave Baba had like a 150 string, and he only beat me by a pin to take first, and I was second. Yeah, but then see what my theory is. You got the one, you got the, the four, excuse me, the one, six, ten, mm -hmm. the last ball. You need three to tie. You're not going to throw the two in the corner like 99% of the people in the world are going to do to get two pins. You would always chances, do your chances of getting the three yeah. are very rare. Are well, very I mean, tough. if you know... Yeah. If you knew. Now, if you didn't know, you'd probably shoot the two. Right. Oh, in, a, in, right. A, in a head-to-head -head match, yes, I want to know. But on, on a roll-off, I don't want to know. I won't even look at anybody else's scores. Uh, that one got away from him. Let's see what happens, people. He's got to throw the strike ball. He's got to get the pocket. He's got to throw it over. No, no. Too wide. When Ryan's... Not bowling, he enjoys sports, hiking, walking the dogs, spending time with his family, and writing screenplays, as you guys all mentioned earlier. He wants to give a shout out to his co workers, his mom, dad, sister, and godson, Cash. Well, he's opened the door up here, people. Ryan throws a 102 first string, yeah. and Jonathan's already at 93 after eight. So Jonathan's going to open up a really big lead right now. With a Gets couple a couple strikes. marks. He's couple up marks. by. Couple of marks, you got what at least a 20 pin lead. Let's see what happens. Oh wow. man, he throw that one. Wow, it's look not at that. that bad though. That with that deadwood there, it's not. My concern is a seven pin. He three, could even six, play seven, to see eight, the side of the, uh, the three pin. See what happens, people. Oh, oh, like I said, seven yeah. pin. Mm hmm. You've seen this one before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a little now, full, a lot of sap. Now, quickly, Michael, the the deadwood is not exactly up against the 10, a right. 7, so we don't call that a plank. It ha in my opinion, by rules of oh, terminology. So a plank, it has to be frozen? Frozen. What you're right. saying? You know what another name is for plank in the rule book? Oh. Bonwood. Oh, B okay. <laughs> that, that Mr. Matala, it is in the rule book. Aren't you glad you came, Mike? <laughs> oh, sure look at this pitch. <laughs> of course he changes his subject. Wow. I think my next book's going to be about restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> At least then you get some free food out of it. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Where's Amber? I need her. <laughs> She's the head chef here at the New Palace Lane. So. Oh, oh, nice shot. Nice shot. That, nice shot. that was pretty. Only way to play it. Well, otherwise. Jonathan uh, opened up a small lead. What's it look like? One. Next 11 lead. plus a pin. Five plus a fill, right? Yes. 11 plus whatever he drops on this ball. Yeah. <clears throat> well, he's going to take a little extra time, though, on Jonathan. You know, Ryan just had an off first string. I mean, like, he is the number two seed, so you know he can throw the ball. He was throwing some bombs. I was right next to him. Oh, 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 two Phil. Oh, mm. didn't want that. So after one, Jonathan Boudreaux with a 115, Ryan Drago with a 102. Want to give a shout out to our sponsors, North End Mazda Subaru and Ludwig Mass. Visit buynorthend.com or see them in person and see Marty Babineau and his excellent sales staff on a new or pre-owned Mazda or Subaru. Also, go to YouTube, type in Watch Me Suck at Bowling and see him, my good friend George do parodies on Kendall Pin Bowling, Duck Pin Bowling, and yes, ladies and gentlemen, 10 Pin Bowling as well as Minecraft and all <laughs> these basics in education. And thank you to all 951 of our YouTube subscribers. Can't wait to hit 1,000 before season end. We can do it. I know we can. Let us know where you're watching it, who you're watching it with, um, and share it. That's the only way that we get new viewers. Also, um, thank everybody in YouTube, local access, and on Facebook for tuning in and watching season seven of The King of the Palace. Oh, that's oh. good. It's the only Canlapin bowling show oh. with its own world title belt. And designed and founded by who? You don't have to be bashful, David. David Matala, people. It is what it is. It is. That's absolutely it's correct. Ten box. And if you, if you want King of the Palace in your neck of the woods, just contact your local public access provider. Tell them you want King of the Palace. You just sign a piece of paper. It doesn't cost you anything. They contact us. We stream it to them, and they air it for you. And again, they pick the date and the time that they air it, not us. Now right. we... Oh, look at this. We, we've had a couple people ask, why, why is it on this time or that? I said... You know, they've messaged me about it. I'm like, we don't pick it. That's, that's them. Yep. So that's why we have to be specific so, about that. So uh, how many different uh, community access systems run the show, do you know? 16, uh, 16 or 17 cities or towns around, oh. Ma around Massachusetts. Okay. 
So yeah, nothing so. outside of mass, though, at this point. Um, not that I'm aware of. I know they were trying to get it out in Canada. Um, and also out in Maine. I would um, shoot for Las Vegas. And I, I wish. And I'll tell you why, because I've been out in Vegas uh, back when the Comcast show it, it was on Nesson, wasn't it? Or what? Uh, CN8. Oh, it was CN8? Yeah. Well, I did hear from people that actually saw our show when they were in Vegas. And uh, there's so many international people out there that uh, to, to see it there might get a little seed of ideas here to, to take it back to their community. Sure. Yeah. That's an idea. I mean, we have, you know, being on YouTube, we have a lot of transplants from the New True. England area that from all around the world. And mm -hmm. they tune in from, like, Sweden and and France and um, Australia. Did, Australia. It's Florida just, would be another place. It's just kind of cool. I don't know? get that. Just, and I was just in Florida last week, and there are so many. That's the only thing keeping me in New England is came up in Bowling. <laughs> is that right? Because <laughs> with my job, I can transfer down there with no, no sure. issue. Sure. And with how many transplants are in Florida from New England, I don't know how anybody has an open a Candlepin Center. And if you talk to the locals, they're all dying for a Candlepin Center yeah. down there. Well, when I uh, when the winter comes next year, I'm going to do a book tour for lunch with Tommy and Stacia in Florida. Nice. Because there's places like the villages where Gary Duffett lives yep. and some other people. And he says, hey, I'll, we'll hook you up with the, the bookstores, the community groups. There's writer's groups. And, oh, and nice. Tommy lives in Florida, Tommy's in Naples, yes. yes. My brother's there, so... Um, that's two years ago I connected when I was visiting my brother, went over to the Ulsters and hung out for the day, and uh, that was pretty cool. I think a lot of people that love him would oh, yeah. would have liked to have that opportunity. We had his nephew, uh, his grandson, sorry, yeah. Yeah. on here. He was oh, the, what nice a shot. shot. He was the champion. Nice He shot. was our, our former king. Nice Oh, is that right? Yes. Yep. Is this Aaron. Aaron or Nathan? Aaron. Aaron, Aaron. yeah, the old, he's the older. Yeah. First time he ever, sh I think it was the first time, first he, time he came down. down he won. Yep. Yeah. But he was on the Canopy in uh, New Gen. A couple yeah, times yeah, also. you mentioned that. Yeah. Okay, here we go, people. Jonathan on alley three. Oh, oh wide right to the again. Right. Four out of the last five boxes. He's been wide right, David. He puts yeah. four in a spare. He's been uh, struggling. Well, he's been gearing up that ball. He's been throwing that ball yeah. pretty yeah, right. hard. Yeah, David. he has upped it. I was a little disappointed I wasn't here last month to uh, see the history being made when the first woman made the show. It was kind of cool, man. Yeah. Oh, nice but he show. came back. He made the spare. I did talk to her on uh, Facebook afterwards. Yeah. And, and? Uh, she said she was coming down this week but th for this taping, but I don't know. Maybe she had to work or something. Maybe. She but was she like, was uh, very proud of the fact that she was the first woman ever to make yeah. that show. Yep. Yeah. And, I, you know, it was... The, and that's what the, the show was designed for, you know? That's I mean, we, we put the women out there, you know, but... They're all, they can compete with the men as well. Yes. That's why it was an 80% handicap. So it was open open to anybody. I mean, we always have women that try out, you know, with the 80%. Jonathan. But she happened to be the very first sure. one to actually make the show. Yep. Sure. We used to have a lot more women show up than yeah. we do now. But like, I know your show was open to men or women. Uh, no, we had actually had, we just did mixed doubles. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, you're right. Women could have tried out yes. for it. Yeah, that's, that's true. And but one, we never had one, one that I'm aware of. Not when I was doing it. Well, maybe it was Comcast then that she made it. Lynn Thompson was the only female to ever make. Uh, I mean, it could have been show. if it was before '97 that it. Yeah. You no, I think right. it was. I think it was Comcast yeah. that she made. Seven on the fill and shooting the seven ten. The railroad split. Oh. Oh wow. Big try. Nice bid. The railroad split the seven ten. Well, the the Janet Pock, uh, you know, appearance yes. on Channel Five. I just watched that actually yesterday. Yes. That, that and uh, I've got a story about that in the book as well, because I got she and Bruno DeFeo together in yep. the same place, and we, we did the interview. I grew up rolling with Bruno in East Boston. Oh, you did? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, Ryan, fill on the spear. A lot of nuzzles oh. in, uh, in East Boston. Everett. <laughs> Everett? Everett. Oh, Everett. is that where you're from? Sure. Well, that's where a lot of the family's from. Oh, I'm okay. from Saugus, East Boston. I'm any from relatives Olive. Any relatives in the, in the football family? Yes. The, oh, all those good. nuzzles from Everett are oh, my Matthew family. Matthew yes. and Frodo. I thought yes. really they were Frank football players. Sarma. Yeah, they Played were Lemister phenomenal. Oh, oh he knew it. He you knew it as soon as it left right. his hand. I agree with you, David. He knew Oh, well, he needed that desperately. Well, you talk about coming up to the level of your uh, opponent, you know, not much happening the first game, and now it's tit for tat almost yes, yeah. in this uh, second string. Four marks out of seven boxes so far. Ryan definitely wants to put another one oh, here. Oh, he needs this. Yeah, is it's the big winner. Box. Go home. And he's down 16 box to box. Come on. Oh, no. Well, we, let's get back at this. Wow, back door may, get, may get a nine out of it. Uh, Dennis, quickly for the fans out there of our bowling show. The I've been questioning, oh. been questioned by what type of balls are being made now? Are they made out of 
that polyethylene or what the, do they call there's it? There's different kinds. Oh, there is? Yes. Is it real expensive ones? Oh, sorry. There, there can be. Well, it will. Oh, he makes another nice spear. He's up. got a triple. I think it all depends on the person selling the bowling ball, actually. I mean, I could tell you where to go to buy the, the same exact balls at the cheapest price, but I'm not going to do that. I I'm would. not going. No, we can't do that. I agree. Why no, not? Because I'm not going there. Why? Because I'm, I'm just not. But it's... Why? it's <laughs> Guess I'm not. Just start dropping. But there's different types of bowling balls being made that. Huh? No, it's right. <laughs> um, but the different types that are made are cost different prices than, like, say, rubber costs more than. than yeah, the, but than that's the, what we're um, driving at. What costs more, the rubber? Or the the comets. Comets are the most expensive. Comets? Right yes. What's it's it rubber. Made? Oh, it's rubber. Rubber. Yeah. Oh, it needs. But, to. but the thing the is, is, they're not all ten? rubber. Ten. Yeah. It's not. It's, it's just a rubber composite. Right. Inside the in, mixed inside the mixture, they're not like a solid rubber. Right. But then you have like the uh, urethanes, which are the uh, reactive use, and you have the paramounts, which I believe are like porcelain. Oh no, no, no! Beautiful shot. Puts the ball 60 feet, hits his object. Where are we supposed? And look what happens. I'll tell you off here. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, oh, what a whoa, bid. whoa, whoa, whoa. Almost made the spread eagle, people. Right, it's done. I'll say it. I don't care. One out of 100, Michael? Make the, the spread eagle? eagle? Yeah, probably. I thought it's a rubber. I mean, I've made it once in my life. That's right. I made it twice. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it's one out of 100. The bowling alley? <laughs> huh? It's the bowling alley? Yeah. They make them? They sell them. Maybe it's one oh, out they of 100. sell thousand. them. Yeah. Okay, right. There's only one place oh. that makes them. Paramount. Yeah. But there's all, everywhere it sells them, there's all different prices. You can get the same ball, go to five different places, and there's five different prices. Oh, oh. nice ball. Drops seven. I thought, there was, I thought you were saying there was another place that, like, um, no. made them. No, Epco owns the rights to it, and they won't give it to anybody. Oh. Well, then, I sell bowling balls, too, and I'll beat anybody's That's what I'm price. saying. That's why I wasn't <laughs> saying. <laughs> Come on. Oh, my God. I thought, I, thought like, I thought it was, like, there's some trade secret that somebody no. else is making bowling balls. No, I was no, like, no. I'd say it. I don't care. Oh, just missed. I have, I have, I have no dog in any fight. No, there were actually there was a company I want to say about ten or twelve years ago that was trying to make them, but they just couldn't do it. Yep. Eight bucks. There's a, I guess there's a certain formula that um, Epco owns the rights to that keeps it the way it is. Uh huh. And they won't release it to anyone. Which you know, whatever it is, it is what it is. But well, I mean, technically, to be honest with you. If it's a patent, you can actually go and, and, and find out what it's made out of. Maybe. And then you can, if you really had the ingenuity and a way to make a bowling ball, you could actually use their formula but change something in it yeah. to make it different. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I, isn't that considered a monopoly because you're the only one that makes it? Yeah, pretty, pretty much. You can't regulate prices because there's no competition. Yeah. Where are you going here, Michael? To the left? I think so. Yeah. Come on, right. Come on, right. Uh -oh. Now, don't get me wrong. Paramount's done a tremendous amount for this this bowling industry. I, I would never discount them on that. They have over the years. Yes, they have. Donating bowling balls to championships and stuff. They have. But it's still, oh. they, there should be other oh. companies that are allowed to make it. That way they can regulate the prices a little better. There's not enough money to be, not enough bowlers for another company to come in and right. try to make them, sadly. Yeah. It just, the, the bowling well, you know, it's are, also, you also have to look at it this way, too. Uh, when it comes right down to bowling alleys closing or whatever it may be, one of the major factors oh, oh, what dropping a, a bomb. Talk about a hammer. One well, of the major factors is, yeah, there's there, there may not be a lot of bowlers anymore, but for somebody to monopolize the business and charge so much for so many things, alleys can't keep up with it. Yeah. You know, I mean, you look at a bowling pin at you know. Uh, two years ago, it was like twenty, uh, twenty-two dollars a pin. Now it's up to thirty-three. What yeah. do you contribute you know, and that's to? That's just right. that's just one pin. What do you contribute to? So you imagine to? trying to buy all those pins. What do you contribute to? Huh? It cost them material, supply and demand. Greed. Greed. Yep. Greed. How's that? I've said it for years. Greed is killing the sport. Well, Jonathan Boudreau had a beautiful strike. Followed it up. Took out the spread eagle minus the claw, and I've he filled actually, the spear with a six. I've actually told people who wanted to order, and yo. And, I'm, and and I have, oh, I, nice I have, I, like I said, I have no dog in any fight, right? But if they want, if if they want like shoes or whatever, order them online. Go to Amazon; they're cheaper. Yeah, but yeah. You know, I and know it's, it's, it's very sad, difficult. It's, it's sad to say, but yeah, yeah. Bowling.com. You know, um, 
It's yeah. the same thing with automobile parts, David, Dennis, Michael. Same thing. Go online. It's all there. Yeah. Nice bid. Oh, he's Brought left a two pin on a three six. He box needs to this. box. Ryan's down nine. I don't, don't have any right. animosity. He might get anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hates everyone equally. Exactly. <laughs> Big, no, but I look at it this way. You know, it. Big spare shot. Excuse me, David. Big spare shot here. Yeah. Can't let him bowling and or bowling in general. Nice. Oh, nice. He needed spare. that. Like back, that. In, like back in the day, it was when you had all the big TV shows and all the roll-offs and stuff like that. Bowling centers worked together. They really did. You know, you could go to come to Palace Lanes and try out for Channel 5. You could go to Putnam's. Or you could go anywhere else in, in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and try out for yep. the TV shows. They worked together. They were all one. I've chased many roll-offs. You know, um, Drops. Now, nowadays it's very hard for another alley to promote another business. Um, because they feel like they're giving businesses away, you know, um, it's, it's too bad. Big, big shot here. This could be a tie game. Yeah. Oh, beautiful oh, ball. Back to backs. Now he's put the pressure on. So after eight, Jonathan Boudreau at 95, Ryan Drago at 100, working on a spare. Ryan is down eight pins box to box with an wow. eight pin of bet. He'll tie up the game. All terrific uh, episodes, the last several here for this group of uh, yes. of roll off. Oh, wide left. And next week, the number one seed. Uh -huh, the, the, the much anticipated. The legend. Are we not allowed the to legend. say who it is? Oh, we can say oh, it. We can say it. Yep. Tommy Oster. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It was not reading surprise. it right. <laughs> uh, Jeff's right. And Jeff is actually. Oh, oh beautiful what pick a up. Shot. That's a clutch shot. Jeff is actually Ryan's uh, childhood idol, as Mike Morgan is to mine. Ah. So he was actually bowling next to uh, Jeff in the roll-off. Did you, didn't you bowl against Morgan on your first time on the Comcast show, or did no, you ever that bowl was, him? My first time was Betancourt, my second time was Sargent, my third time was uh, Dave Barber. Oh, picked some good ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at this. Ooh. Good character building yeah. for you. Huh? There we go. Especially my first one, uh, Betancourt went seven marks in a row to close a string on me. Oops. Four, seven, <laughs> six, ten. Better known as what, David? Prune juice for everyone. Double the, dub <laughs> the double pinochle. <laughs> Oh, oh a wow. double pinochle. Want to give a shout out to our sponsors, North End Mazda Subaru. Visit buynorthend.com or see them in person. See Marty Babineau and his excellent sales staff on a new or pre-owned Mazda or Subaru. Also, go to YouTube, type in Watch Me Suck at Bowling, and see my good friend George do parodies on Candle Pin Bowling, Duck Pin Bowling, and Ten Pin Bowling, as well as Minecraft videos and all these basics in education and learning. Want to thank everybody out on YouTube, Facebook, and Local Access for tuning in, watching Season 7 of The King of the Palace. Also, thank you to FATV, the OEPD, the, the, the crew behind the, behind the cameras. We have Keep Amber, going. myself, we have Dennis, we have Mr. Bronchuk, and of course our very special guest who's been sitting in, Mr. Mike Morin. Right now, Ryan's at 107, to Jonathan's 95. He's only down one pin, but he's up against a spare six. This is going to be interesting. Ryan people. needs a 134 string to win. Oh. oh. Wow. Well, so would you have gone further right? Do you think he meant to go there? I don't, probably it, not. Yeah. That was a tough one. Well, this is a clutch bowling right here. Yeah. Right yeah. here. The big pin here, too. Oh. oh. One around it. What do we need, Dennis? Michael? Triple. David. He needs no. uh, 18 pins. 18. He needs a Mark 8. A Mark, mark eight, 8 to tie and a Mark what? Mark 8 to tie and a Mark... You mark eight to tie and mark nine to win. win. Yeah. yeah. Here we go, people. This is what we want. Okay. No, not, mark seven. Mark seven. Tie. Tie, yeah, right. My bad, yeah. sorry. Yeah, not mark eight to win. Here we go. Head pin. Oh. oh. Well, mm. he's got to make a, a shot. Leave. Could be worse. Could you win? This is it, people. Stand well, up. Well, you know it. what it is? I bet the nerves are pounding in his chest right now. Uh, it's first time you on think TV. He knows. I wonder if he knows. Oh, I'm pretty sure he does. Yeah. Here it goes, people. You'll, you'll goes. see his reaction. Oh, no. oh wow. wow. Just missed. So next week, it'll be Jonathan Boudreau oh. versus his teammate on Friday nights, Jeff Sorrett. I am looking forward to that match, man. Both both those guys are my favorite bowlers, man. I love bowling against them. Love watching them bowl. I've been waiting for seven seasons to have Mr. Sorrett grace the king of the palace, and I'm finally going to get to watch it. After two, oh. Jonathan Boudreau with a 120 for a two-string total of 235. Ryan Drago with a 125 for a two-string total of 227. Jonathan had six spares and one strike, and Ryan had seven spares. Excellent candle pin bowling, people. Thank you all for tuning into the King of the Palace. Now let's get to the 11th box and meet our champ with the Nuz.
I'm here with this week's winner. Again, I feel like a broken record, but I'm sure he likes it. The current champ and still king, Mr. Jonathan Boudreau. Uh, again, consistency, 115, 120 for a 235 against 227. What are your thoughts? Uh, I got real lucky on that one. Um, I was way off the head pin. Luckily, you know, he had some tough breaks as yeah. well. So it was kind of a, it was a close match in one sense, not as high scoring as the other ones, but it was still pretty close. So, you know, it rem they remain close matches, but, yeah. you know, I, I, I know if it, the next one, I'm not going to be able to get, I, I just know I'm not going to be able to get away with that. So well, I for need those, to stop blowing better. For those who don't know, the uh, number one seed next week is your teammate on Friday nights and world's teammate, Jeff Surrett. Ever, anybody who knows Canapin knows Jeff. Jeff's the best. He's number one. So, uh, you know, I, I bowl first on that team. He bowls last. So it's kind of bookends. See what happens. Good luck to you. I'll see everyone next week.